All right, Scraft Ahoy. Uh, it is Kosor um, versus Smarticus. Uh, I don't know if this is game one, game two. I've no idea what's happening. Um, please, please do rename the replays before you send them to me. It does help a lot. Anyway, we've got Kosor in the uh, top left here of Death Aura. And uh, down in the bottom right, look, we've got Smarticus um, as our Protoss player. Uh, Death Aura, not a bad map, very straightforward to get up to three bases on Death Aura, very straightforward to hold those three. Uh, you can kind of position your army in this location and it can easily enough defend uh, your natural and your, um, what? Your natural and your third, sorry. Uh, so um, eBay first is just bizarre and uh, no idea what that's about. Um, I. There, there literally isn't an explanation for that. Um, also, no workers in production here. So um, I would go so far as to say at this stage, 50 seconds in, my money's on Smarticus. Uh, Smarticus is, look, building workers. Uh, two pylons, no idea why you would do that either. Um, he's just gone pylon mad here, building pylons everywhere. So uh, I might change my mind about that, but you know, <laughs> he's got the worker advantage. That's for sure. Look at the income advantage he's managed to eke out already. Um, on the other side of the map, Kosor hasn't a clue what he's doing. He, he's mining gas, but he doesn't yet have a barracks. Uh, doesn't even have a supply depot. Hasn't yet built a worker. Um, uh, more gas. That's definitely not what you need right now. What you're going to need is a barracks. So, uh, you know, if you're new to StarCraft, um, what you do is build workers in the early game. Straight away, you build a worker. As soon as the game starts, you build a worker. Um, and once that worker is built, you build another one. And once that is built, you build another one. And once that's built, you build another one. There's very much a pattern here. Uh, you just constantly build workers. Um, you also need to build things like pylons uh, as you go in order to not be supply blocked. Uh, when you've got the money to do so, you need to build things like gateways, like barracks if you're playing Terran. Um, all of those things, you know, cost money. Um, and you'll only have money to spend if you've built workers. Uh, Kosor at present is only mining without workers. To give you some context on that, you start the game mining with 12. Literally, uh, Kosor, you would have been better off if you'd have just been absolutely AFK. Anyway, um, over on the Smarticus side of the map, uh, Zealots in a queue <laughs> and uh, another Zealot building here. Uh, no danger of being supply blocked with the triple pylon here, 25 of 39. Yep, throw down another one just in case, why not? Um, so the fast expo, expo from Kosor means that if he were to actually build some workers, uh, he could have an income advantage. But of course, you know, having an extra command center is utterly pointless unless you've got workers to mine from these mineral patches uh, and you haven't even got your men saturated. So having a natural is utterly pointless at this stage. He's going to upgrade to the planetary fortress. Maybe that's what he had in mind with this engineering bay opener. Uh, I know what I'll do. I'll throw down an eBay so that I can defend skillfully with a planetary fortress. Uh, so the planetary fortress upgrade for command centers um, gives them additional health and armor so that they're harder to kill, but more importantly, um, fits them out with a massive cannon on top that does splash damage and it blaps away. Um, so uh, yeah, you know, planetary fortresses can, can be really badass. Uh, you don't normally build a planetary in your natural, um, but you know, Sure, why not? Uh, one of the things you can do with the planetary is uh, if your base is under attack, you grab your workers and, and you repair, you, you just get them to repair the planetary fortress. Um, and it makes it so hard to kill. You know, if there's 20 SCVs repairing one of these things, it takes a massive amount of firepower to, to take it down. So um, a planetary fortress on its own with SCVs repairing it can actually see off a pretty substantial force. Um, Depending on what type of units it is, obviously if it's something like uh, flying stuff like void rays, um, then not so good because it only shoots ground. But stuff like zealots, you know, planetary fortress great against zealots. They're melee units, they have to get up close and personal to it, uh, and the damage it does is pretty substantial. So, um, yeah. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Upgrades coming from the forge for Smarticus. The, the expo is uh, building. This um, sensor tower, sensor towers are a really useful thing, especially if you're not very good at scouting, especially if you're, and you know, 
uh, we're not, are we? <laughs> neither of these players has been anywhere near the other side of the map. So neither of them have the first idea of what their opponent's doing. They're just playing blind. Uh, and, you know, sure, why not? Um, so sensor towers can be great. You can, you know, uh, um, you could have built this over here or something might have been the better position for it. Um, when you when you go to throw one of these down, you have the worker ready to build it. If you look at the mini map, it will show you this ring of where is covered. Um, so in, in general, what you want to do is build them in places. Uh, I don't mind at all. Um, you build it in places where it's going to cover uh, places like regions like this so that you'll see incoming um, drops, incoming war prisms, incoming flying units coming to harass your stuff. Or build it where it's going to cover uh, areas like this so that you'll see any army that is about to sort of rock up and attack one of your bases. Um, so very useful things, sensor towers. They, they don't give you vision of the map, but enemy units show up as little blobs on the map, much uh, just the same as they do um, you know, on the mini map for your own units, they'll show up as little blobs here. So if I kind of, if I look from uh, Kosor's view, you can see that he has nothing in this region. Um, if the, if the, any of these units were within this circle, uh, when he, when we look from his view, he would see little blobs. You don't get to see what the units are. Um, Smarticus needs to set the rally point on his uh, nexus here. You know, when, when you start the game, the rally point is automatically set onto the minerals, so any worker you build starts mining uh, automatically. That isn't the case for nexuses that or command centers, hatcheries that you build. You have to manually set those. So to do that, you know, select the nexus, just right click on a mineral patch, and that is job done. Uh, Kosor still firmly refusing to build workers, has now gone up to 20 workers mining, but you know, we're, we're six and a half minutes in, um, and at that sort of, at this time in the game, you should absolutely be saturated. You should have uh, all the workers mining. Anyway, um, Smarticus, you, you've got a bunch of zealots here. Uh, if I look at the army supply, you know, it's, it's heavily in your favor. Um, still continuing to build zealots. We're gonna see some sentries in production. I have a strong suspicion uh, Smarticus doesn't really know what sentries are for or what they do, um, but I, I like sentries, um, very, very, useful unit it's a spell casting unit it does shoot but not really you know it doesn't really do significant damage to anything when one of these sentries pops out i'll show you in some more detail um, but the things they can do they can produce force fields that kind of block off an area of map that's uh, sort of two hexes wide uh, or is it three hexes maybe it's three hexes wide um, so you can drop a force field here and block this area of the map. Uh, they can pop up a guardian shield, which basically takes two off any ranged attack. Um, and that can be a very effective thing, especially against things like Marines um, and things like uh, things that do splash damage. Um, the other thing they can do is produce hallucinations, uh, which look like real units to your opponent. Um, so for example, you could produce a large hallucinated high value unit when you just before you go into an engagement. Um, and that would mean that your opponent's army would, you know, waste far apart shooting that hallucination, uh, which would mean your real units aren't taking damage. So uh, if you look at this entry here, 4040 doesn't really have a great deal of shield or health. Um, and and it, its firepower is, is negligible. It doesn't really do damage in any significant way. So uh, Kosor, you need to, you just need to build more stuff um look how much money you know despite not building any workers you've got vast amounts of money in the bank and the reason for that is that your, your barracks is idle you're not building anything um from it you you are nine minutes in and you've only got one barracks and, and one factory as production facilities um and, and that is unacceptable to be honest at, at this stage when your third's going up uh, you know personally if i was going bio by now i'd have six barracks um, in production, um, a factory, a starport. If I was going mech, I'd have sort of uh, three, four factories going, um, a starport, a barracks. Uh, yeah, you just, you need more production. Um, not only do you need the buildings, but you need to be using them as well. Um, so Smarticus, what are you doing? You're, you're getting the gas in your natural. Um, you know, again, Smarticus has stopped building workers, but isn't short of minerals. Uh, so. 
what we can learn from this, you know, when you're playing StarCraft, if you want to play well, I, I want StarCraft to be fun for you guys. I don't want this to be like a job or something. Um, but at the same time, you know, the games are uh, more fun if 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 there are if there is a bit of back and forth, a bit of battling. So uh, the ways to 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 get sort of reasonably competent at StarCraft. In the top right, I, I have a different view for casting the games here than the player view. In, in the top right of the screen, um, at any given time, you have your supply, you have the amount of minerals and the amount of gas you've got up in the top right. In the bottom left, you have got the mini-map. Um, my top tips uh, you know, for playing StarCraft well are pretty basic. Uh, just remind yourself to very frequently check that top right hand corner. If it looks like you're gonna be supply blocked soon, you build a pylon, you build a supply depot, you build an overlord. Um, if you have a lot of money, then you, you spend it. it. It's as simple as that. So uh, things to look out for, are your buildings idle? If they are, they shouldn't be. If your buildings aren't idle um, and you've still got a lot of money, then you need more buildings. And if you just kind of follow that, really basic rule that is overwhelmingly the most important thing to be an effective at playing starcraft what units you build is kind of secondary to that you build a lot um, so you know whatever unit you choose to to make your army out of very rarely is that going to lose you the game uh, the exception being if you build stuff like you know if all you build is zealots and your opponent has flying stuff zealots don't shoot up and maybe you lose the game but you know, if you build any sort of assortment of units, as long as you build a lot of it, your army is going to be effective. Um, so, you know that that's how you end up with a lot of stuff. You just keep checking your money. You keep checking your supply. Um, you check your money, and if it's getting high, you make sure that your buildings are all busy. If your buildings are not busy, make them busy. If your buildings are busy and you've still got lots of money, you need more buildings. And that's kind of it, really. That and always build workers um, you know until you've got four saturated bases you never aren't building workers simple as uh, okay uh, it does look like something's going to kick off here we've got this terran force um it is looking to push in uh, it, it is very much a smaller force um if we look in the upgrades tab um, there are no upgrades for the Terran, so these Marines are awfully squishy. Um, the Protoss, meanwhile, has plus two attack, plus one armor, plus one shields. No charge for the Zealots, uh, but I think they'll still be able to get on top of this Terran army and crush it. Um, these Widow Mines, uh, if Kosor knows what he's doing with the Widow Mines, he can burrow those and, and they can be hugely effective against these uh, Zealots. So. We'll see if that happens or not. If the Widow Mines get burrowed just before the engagement, then, then we could see all of these Zealots just evaporate very quickly. These Reapers are utterly worthless. Um, you know, the Reaper is an early game, fast scouting unit, uh, harass unit. It, it's, it, it's for going into your opponent's base in the early game and getting some stuff done. Uh, let's see if these Widow Mines burrow. Um, if they do, they're gonna create havoc. If they don't, if they just run about, they don't even attack. Uh, so the Widow Mines, I haven't actually done anything at all um, and therefore as expected this Protoss army has just crushed the, the Terran army with with it's a bigger army it had better upgrades um, the only way that Terran army was going to get anything done was was with the Widow Mines the Widow Mines absolutely could have changed that battle completely because they do big damage and they do splash damage um, so you know four burrowed Widow Mines literally would just kill all of these zealots that would be it, just um, boom, gone. Uh, and that would have made a big difference. Uh, without that happening though, um, you know, the Terran army just, g given how far into the game we are, it, it wasn't very big and it, it had no upgrades. So, uh, despite going engineering bay first, the engineering bay hasn't been used at all. Uh, finally, there are gonna be some upgrades. You're just queuing everything up. I, I don't think Kosor actually knows what any of these things mean. Um, so he's queuing up things like, what is that Liberator range? Um, y Yamato cannon and stuff for uh, battle cruisers, but you know you don't have a starport with a tech lab, so you're not going to be building any battle cruisers. Uh, I, I honestly don't think Kosar knows what these things that he's researching are. Uh, one of everything here, um, you know. So plus one for uh, flying units. Uh, again, there are no flying units on the map for you. So um, yeah, so Kosar, you've got a lot to learn. Um, Smarticus 
I don't understand why you're still at home. You've just watched and, you know, you threw out a little lull at the time. You watched your opponent's entire army get crushed. Um, and, and then you thought, right, I've won that. I'll then just wait for him to build another army. Um, why aren't you just walking across the map and winning this game? Uh, I, I don't really understand what, what you're waiting for. Um, you know, give your opponent enough time and who knows, maybe they will build an army that beats yours. Had you just A-clicked across the map after that fight, you, that's it, it's GG, it's game over. Uh, anyway, um, if we if we look uh, here, there, there are now some Liberators in production and Liberators can be really, really effective units. Um, they kind of go into a sort of siege mode um, where they produce a liberation zone uh, and they, they fire out hearty hearty damage into that zone uh, i'll show you what i mean about these sensor towers uh that is kosor's vision so you can see on the mini map the big red blob this is what he sees uh coming at him here so uh let's see what happens as i think we know what's going to happen uh this protoss army is just going to walk through the terran base and kill absolutely everything uh the liberators aren't in that siege mode um the widow mines pointless because uh, they haven't been burrowed the the reapers still as pointless as they were before um this is an awful engagement from protoss all those zealots are just dancing um but it, it just doesn't matter there just isn't enough army for the the turn here um so this is just a massively one-sided fight and this game's over uh much to be learned i think much to be learned here but uh you know on the plus side both the players uh did expand both of them made some stuff eventually uh yeah, even a planetary fortress will not survive this. Uh, and if it isn't being repaired, uh, it definitely will. Oh, finally the repair does come in, but it was a bit bit too slow. Um, needed to get those workers repairing it immediately. Uh, one of, that has a double advantage. It means the workers surround it and the zealots can't get to it. Um, but obviously also it means that it doesn't lose health. Anyway, uh, there's the GG. Um, it is customary once you've GG'd to actually leave the game. There we go. GG.